Well, I am in the garage, AKA my studio, and uh, it feels a little bit back to normal as far as uh, Astro Backyard goes. Shooting in the garage, having discussions with you guys, just being cozy in here, out here. And uh, yeah, it's starting to come together. Got things organized for the most part, still a lot of work to do, and it's a bit rough around the edges in here, but that's the way I like my garages. So uh, yeah, got the star chart up there. Got my Optolong flag that they sent me. Got the TV, the Xbox, got Skyrim in there, uh, beer fridge, stereo, um, classic rock. It's just, yeah, it just feels awesome to be in here. Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to be off axis guiding for the first time for my deep sky astrophotography. Now if you've watched my channel before and you're like me, you normally use auto guiding to correct the guiding and improve the tracking accuracy of your telescope mount so you can get those sharp long exposure images. So auto guiding is nothing new and a lot of you guys are doing that and doing it successfully. It's just a, it's part of the game. You, you've got to learn auto guiding if you want to take those long exposure images. Normally this is done with a secondary smaller guide scope sitting on top of your primary imaging telescope with a guide camera. And then you run that camera to your computer that communicates to the mount and you make those corrections for uh, long exposure imaging. An off axis guider is another way to do guiding that doesn't use that secondary auxiliary telescope with the guide camera to do it. The off-axis guider or OAG uses your primary imaging telescope only. There's no need for that secondary scope and there's a pick-off prism in the off-axis guider that sends starlight up to the sensor in your guide camera. So the configuration you see here is a Lumicon 2-inch Easy Guider. Now this Easy Guider has been around since 1981. I saw, so this has been used by, they said in the pamphlet, tens of thousands of astrophotographers. So I might be one of the few that has never used this one or off axis guiding uh, at all. So I'm learning the benefits of it myself. The obvious benefits to an off axis guider system are obviously reducing weight. There's no longer a secondary guiding telescope on top. Also, you're using the focal length of your primary imaging telescope rather than that smaller scope. So you might be able to get a more precise corrections because you have that more resolution in your image. Lastly, but most importantly, is that it eliminates flexure and it's called differential flexure. So this is something I've never been able to identify myself. Basically, it's when there's a mismatch between the axis of your imaging telescope and your guide scope. So if there's any difference there, your guiding is going to be overcorrecting for something that's only wrong with the guide scope and not your primary imaging camera. So there's a mismatch there that creates a problem. So you might see that in your in your images if, if your your guiding isn't going well, the differential flexure could be the culprit. So this eliminates that because of course your your primary imaging camera and your guide camera are one. So they're united in that way, and there's not going to be any difference between the two. So essentially your guiding can improve. Again, this is something that maybe I had an issue with before and didn't notice. I didn't know why my guiding was bad. When the focuser's hanging way out there, there could be some wiggle in there and, and that would be enough to create some differential flexure and negatively affect auto guiding. It's all news to me. I just learned all this pretty exciting configuration here because uh, not only is it beautifully color matched the black and red, how nice is that? I can control this whole thing with the ASI Air because I'm using two ZWO ASI cameras, the 294 MC Pro color camera that I've been, been using for quite some time, and the 290mm mini guide camera. This is a monochrome, very sensitive guide camera. So not only is it going to be my first time auto guiding using the Red Cat 51 and taking some of those longer exposures, but the first time auto guiding on the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro. So the Sky Guider Pro has guider in the name and I've never actually auto guided with it. I've never felt the need to go longer, but I'm going to now just because I got to put that feature to use. So a very portable lightweight setup, obviously here. Uh, the, there are some things to consider, some concerns about off axis guiding. And one of them I'm a little bit worried about with this configuration because it's having a telescope that can pull in enough light to actually send enough starlight 
through the pickoff prism into the guide camera. So you need enough aperture and obviously that the F ratio is going to affect that. So 51 millimeter diameter is very small. So the 290mm mini is notoriously sensitive, that monochrome sensor. So if there are stars in there, even faintly, it should be able to pick them up. I'll just use longer guiding exposures if I have to. Tonight, there's an 87% illuminated moon, uh, which sucks. And it's also galaxy season. So those galaxies are so tiny and I'm using this wide field, 250 millimeter focal length telescope. So not, not the smartest choice for tonight. I should be using something that with a long focal length, but like I said, I wanted to test out this off axis guider. So I'm gonna be using a broadband filter, this time a little bit different. It's the Lumicon UHC filter. This is a filter that's been around for a long time. I've seen people talk about it. I wanted to try it out for myself. This is from Farpoint Astro or Optical Structures, which is the parent company. They're the ones that have sent this off axis guider to me along with that Lumicon H UHC filter. So I'm excited to get it up and running. I have not chosen a target yet, believe it or not. It is quarter after eight. I haven't, ch I haven't chosen a target yet and it's getting dark out there. Tonight's the night when it all changes direction. Finally, we've got some clear skies after so much rain. It's Easter Sunday and uh, they said it was supposed to, the forecast called that it would clear up tonight. I didn't believe it for myself and I've been checking out that back window constantly all night or all afternoon. And finally, I can see it breaking up. And uh, this isn't only the weather breaking up and clearing up, uh, this month, but this is it for, for 2019. I think the, the, the cloud lid we've been under since the beginning of the year is over and it's just time to get down to business. I'm really excited about this rig. I had to sort some things out because I want to control this with the ASI Air, which you can't see. It's on, oh, it's right over here. Yeah, you can. And uh, I want to auto guide with the Sky Guider for the first time. So as you can see, I've got the uh, off axis guider there and uh, plugged into the ST4 cable. And I actually had to talk to a ZWO support who got right back to me about a setting I needed to change on the ASI Air. So I'm hoping that works tonight and uh, I can actually start collecting some images. I really have no idea what I'm going to shoot tonight. It's kind of a weird time of year to be using a wide field refractor like the Red Cat. So with a 250 millimeter focal length, that's obviously a really wide field of view and it's galaxy season. So those galaxies are really tiny. There's not a lot of great uh, wide field nebulae out right now. The really good stuff, the, the Sagittarius and Scorpius and all that doesn't come out until about two in the morning. So I still have no idea what I'm gonna shoot tonight, but really I just need to test this off axis guider on this really cool, interesting system here tonight. I'll figure something out. My battery's dying in this little red headlamp. It might turn off at any second, so just be warned. Feels good to be back out here again. It's not freezing, kind of pleasant. Oh, there it goes. Got the garage sorted out, got stuff put away. We've got our patio furniture out on the deck now. So uh, there's a little more room in there. And uh, yeah, it just feels good to get back on track, basically. It looks like a promising forecast for the next, uh, for the next week or so. So spring is definitely here. And that means a heck of a lot more astrophotography. Haven't cut the tree down or even made plans to cut the tree down. The plan is to, uh, to let it kind of grow in, fill in, see what we're working with, see how bad it is, see how much sky is covered. But uh, I mean, having a little privacy at the back of the yard isn't the worst thing in the world. And we're getting some awesome birds on the tree. Today on our feeder, we had a goldfinch, uh, a brown creeper, a house finch, red-breasted nuthatch, dark-eyed junco, uh, red-winged blackbird, just killer birds right at the feeder. It's that time of year though. So many great positives to take away from tonight. First of all, how about this audio? Huh? Just feels amazing to be back in this garage again, uh, being comfortable out here, having a place to kind of just hang out while uh, I'm imaging and to uh, talk to you guys, of course. So the biggest news is, of course, I'm auto guiding with the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro for the first time. Now with a name like Sky Guider Pro to never have auto guided with it, I felt a little bit guilty. I've had this mount since 2017 and I've finally utilized the auto guiding feature of it. So it's actually a really clever little rig out there because it's an off axis guiding system using the Lumicon Easy Guider and the Red Cat 51. So it's very small, portable, compact. There's no secondary guide scope on there. It's the off axis guider utilizing the, uh, the red cat to auto guide with that pick off prism. And it's working brilliantly. 
So the only thing I wish I could have done was use the ASI Air to control this rig because that would have been the ultimate portable combo. Uh, but unfortunately there were some settings I couldn't figure out how to, uh, to connect the guide camera um, to, the, to the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. There's no Skyguider Pro in the, the menu option for mounts. So I've been talking to ZWO support. They've been really great back and forth about that. So I'm sure I'll figure that out soon. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to auto guide with it. So I hooked it up to PHD2 guiding and uh, my laptop. And uh, sure enough, I found a guide star in that pickoff prism. And uh, I'm auto guiding and dithering using the Skyguider Pro and the William Optics Red Cat 51. Very cool. That's the other thing I, I didn't even mention is that I'm using a cooled astronomy camera with the Red Cat for the first time, not a DSLR. So that's kind of fun to get that wide field of view and uh, to utilize a cool, dedicated astronomy camera. So I'm using APT to control the camera, my uh, tried and true go-to source. Uh, like I said, I wanted to use the ASI Air app, but I've got to get that, uh, that guiding sorted out. So I'll just show you on the screen here what my uh, image frames look like. I went with three minute exposures with the Unity Gain, that's 120 on the gain setting. And uh, as you can see, you can see the uh, Whirlpool Galaxy in there, nice and small in a sea of stars. I'm not sure if there's some uh, extra galaxies in the field of view, there has to be. There's, there's lots of galaxies around that area, I know, because it's, it's close by to the, the uh, Pinwheel Galaxy as well. So that's what my image frames look like. The guiding, uh, if you look at the, the PhD guiding graph, it looks a little choppy, but here's something that may save you a load of time that I didn't realize. It's so obvious. This is classic astro backyard, backyard astrophotography, learning things the hard way. The, I'm running the guiding calibration steps for the 290 on the, on the Skyguider Pro and I'm waiting for the declination to calibrate. And it's going to all the way to 60 steps and it says declination, calibration failed, star did not move. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm using the Skyguider Pro. It has a, a right ascension access motor only. There's no dec declination motor. So of course it's not gonna be able to move that motor. There's nothing there to talk to. So turn off the declination guiding and sure enough, that completed the calibration, so it's doing those RA adjustments, uh, subtle adjustments for, for better tracking, and almost more importantly, dithering, which is something I've really wanted to utilize when using the Skyguider Pro. So yeah, kind of a, a dummy moment, trying to calibrate the, uh, the declination for a mount that doesn't have a declination motor. But maybe you didn't think of that either, so. I've got some really exciting stuff on the way some big plans with uh, some huge projects for the summer coming up that I'm like insanely excited about. All I need are some clear skies to get started on them. And it looks like that's happening soon. So man, May is a busy month. Uh, as soon as April's over, it's just like crazy for May, including the uh, Cherry Spring Star Party. So about that Lumicon off access guider, there's some things you need to go to get it running properly and it did take some trial and error to get me up and running. And the biggest thing is getting the right spacing because, because you're using your imaging uh, telescope only, you need to find focus between your primary imaging camera and your guide camera at the same time. So that can be a bit tricky because you'll focus your primary imaging telescope and your camera, get sharp stars, batten off mask, and then you go to your guide camera and you've got these weird long stars that are just too misshapen to use for auto guiding. So you need to find a balance between the two of them. Uh, and to do that, I had to uh, create some space in front of the camera, bring it back a bit. Uh, and then I, I started with getting round stars for the guide camera and then adjusted the spacing for the primary camera after that. When I finally got it close, then I got the primary imaging telescope, I got the sharp stars using the Batnoff mask, and then thankfully I was able to just back off the guide camera, lifting it up in the barrel just slightly, it was like a few millimeters, and those long stars turned to sharp ones. And uh, the other thing people worry about with an off-axis guider, so I've heard, is that uh, having enough aperture and diameter of scope to pull in uh, enough starlight to actually pick off usable stars for, for guiding. Uh, and it doesn't get any smaller than the, the Red Cat 51. So I thought maybe it's not even possible to use off-axis guiding with a, with a refractor like that. But at f4.9, 
Uh, it was able to pull in stars just fine. Uh, it helps that the uh, 290mm Mini is a super sensitive monochrome guide camera. I think that's what bailed me out, but sure enough, uh, no matter where I pointed the telescope, I was able to find useful guide stars using off-axis guiding with uh, the Red Cat 51 and the Lumicon Easy Guider. So really great experience overall. It's not something I was even looking into. Uh, Farpoint Astro approached me about using an Easy Guider. I was like, I honestly, I looked it up after that. And I was like, okay, maybe I could do something cool with this. And it's a new area I haven't explored. So I thought it was a great opportunity to share it with you guys too, anyone looking to get into it. And uh, Lumicon's great because they are pretty much pioneers of the off-axis guider. I, as I understand, they invented it, they patented it. So there's obviously been variations over the years because all, all the manufacturers seem to make their, their own version of it now. But anyways, it was a pretty cool experience and I'm glad to have uh, explored that.